All right. Sometimes um, the way our book teaches things is kind of interesting. Um, so today I'm going to teach you about taking apart to multiply is it actually called the distributive property. Doesn't that make you sound so much smarter? We don't take apart things to multiply. We use the what? The distributive property. So what you want to do is you can now use this whole idea of taking it apart and use your smart words of the distributive property to solve problems. So for example, if I have four times eight, well, I'm gonna go ahead and use my parentheses. I can put them in each time. And I'm gonna keep that first one the same. It doesn't have to be the first number that you break apart, that you keep the same, but I do. I don't know, that organizes it in my brain. So that's the one that I'm keeping the same, which means I'm gonna break apart the number eight. Now I'm gonna decide which way do I break that up in order to make it easiest for me to do the math. And I'm gonna be honest, when I break eight up, I think I'm gonna do threes and fives. I'm really good at my fives. I know that's 20 just by looking at it. And I'm really good at old McDonald counts by four, four, eight, 12, there we go. And what's 12 plus 20? Well, let's glue that number back together. It's 32. So what's four times eight? It's 32. That, boys and girls, is the distributive property. Now, I'm gonna show it to you, what I consider as backwards, but I just wanna model for you that it really doesn't matter which one you break apart. So let's do seven times nine. I'm not gonna do seven times nine, because there's something in me that wants to break apart that nine. So I'm gonna do seven, times, well, let's just do it this way, nine times seven. So this time, I'm putting out my parentheses and my addition sign. This time, I'm gonna keep the times seven. So what number do I break apart this time? This time I'm choosing to break apart the nine. Um, again, fives are really good for me. So I'm gonna break nine into five and four. So now I have to add 35 and 28. The other ones were easy enough, to be honest, that I was doing in my head, which was very poor modeling on my part. You should always make sure that you're putting these together vertically to make sure you get the right answer. 13, three, four, five, six, 63. Guess what nine times seven is? Mm-hmm. 63. It doesn't matter which factor you choose to break apart. Um, this time I did break apart the first one. Um, I don't know why visually in my head for me, I usually break apart the second one, but that's more a Mrs. Hernison rule, not a life rule. You can break up whichever one you want to. Just make sure that you keep one of them the same and make sure your other one or plus five equals nine. Then you're all set. 